Hello fellow Linux gamers, my name is GoSquad57 and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install Doom 3 natively on Linux via the Dehum 3 engine? Dehum? Dehum? I don't know however that's pronounced. Um, so yeah, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the Dehum 3 GitHub page. Um, it's right here. I'm going to go ahead and paste the URL into the description, but in case you want to uh, manually type it in looking at this video as a reference, if you're weird like that, you can go ahead and do that. Um, one thing to note is that this engine is only compatible with vanilla Doom 3 um, and the Doom 3 Resurrections of Evil expansion packs. This engine does not work with Doom 3 BFG edition. So yeah, if you're going to want to run this game, you're going to want to buy a copy of Doom 3. You can either have a retail copy, which is what I actually used to use, or you could use a Steam copy. Um, so yeah, if, if you want to run this game, you're going to have to buy the game through Steam or find a retail copy. Um, anyway, yeah, the first thing you're going to do is go to this GitHub page, and you're going to want to make sure you're going to scroll down until you see the compiling uh, section of the GitHub page here. And you're going to want to install a couple packages prior to downloading the Doom 3 engine just so you can make sure everything runs properly. The first thing you're going to want to uh, download is CMake. Now if you're using a Debian based distribution such as Ubuntu, <coughs> excuse me, you can install CMake via the terminal. Uh, so you just open your terminal and the command is a sudo apt-get install and then you go ahead and type in CMake and you're also going to want to um, type in all these packages you see here. You're going to make sure you install Zlib, libjpg version 8 at least, libogg, libforbers. You're going to make sure you install all these files because um, if you do not then the uh, when you go to compile the software it's not going to compile properly because you're not going to have all the libraries needed to do so. But anyway yeah once you get all these uh, packages installed and all those are working we're going to scroll back up here uh, at the top of the page. You're going to see the thing here that says releases. There's currently two releases, that's why it says two. You're going to go ahead and click on that. And you're going to be uh, brought to the releases page. You're going to want to find the release that's tagged latest release. And once you find the one that's tagged with that, you're going to want to scroll down of that release and you're going to go to downloads. And you're going to want to download the source code tar.gz file. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and let it download. And once that's done downloading, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open your terminal. Um, I don't remember the command, the shortcut for doing it on Ubuntu, but you, you can just click on the sidebar and open the terminal, I'm sure. <coughs> and once you have your terminal open, you're going to want to CD into your downloads directory. CD stands for change directory, so what we're doing is we're going to change our to the downloads directory. Um, and once you're in here, you're going to want to run you're going to want to run ls, which will list all the files inside that directory. So as you can see here, here's the uh, file we just downloaded. What we're going to do is we, because that is a uh, tarred file, uh, we're going to have to extract it. So what we're going to run is tar -xf and that says extract file and then we're going to type in the name of the file we're going to be extracting which is right here because we ran ls and that told us what the name was and then yeah once you have the file name entered you're going to want to hit enter and then you're going to run ls again and as you can see it extracted that file and now we have this one right here I'm going to go ahead and cd into that new directory that was extracted. We're going to ls so we can get our bearings. Now you're going to want to cd into the neo directory. We're going to run ls once again. And this is where the CMake package that we downloaded earlier comes in handy because we do need CMake in order to compile this uh, piece of software. So what we're going to run is we're going to run CMake C M A K E, just how you think it would be uh, spelled, and then we're going to type in that cmake lists dot text file, making sure that C M and L 
are all uppercase because Unix file systems are case sensitive. So yeah, once we uh, run that command, you're going to get a lot of pretty text. And assuming everything goes right, the stars align and meteorites don't start falling, um, it should say build files have been written to this directory, and that's the directory we're curr currently in. So if we run if we run ls again, you'll see that there is now a make file. So what we're going to do now is after we run cmake, that basically just generates the make file. We're just going to run make. And what that'll do is that'll actually build the engine. Um, so yeah, you're going to get a lot of pretty text on screen. Uh, there's a progress counter over here that tells you uh, where you're at of the building process. Now, depending on your processor, this could take anywhere from, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes, maybe even longer. Um, so yeah, we're just going to go ahead and let this run and uh, go ahead and pause the video and come back when it's done. And welcome back. Anyway, yeah, so the compile process is done. And uh, once it's finished, you're going to want to run ls. And as you can see now, there is a new file, the dehum 3 file. And that is the binary file. So what we're going to do is now that make is done running, you're going to want to run sudo make install. And what this will do is this will copy all the files we just built with the make file. And it will install them into their appropriate directories. So yeah, once you run that, it goes it go ahead and tells you where the uh, files installed are. So anyway, yeah, congratulations. The Whom 3 is now installed. And it's, there you go, that's done. But the thing is, is if you try to run it, um, you don't have the game data files yet. So it's not going to work. It's going to tell you, oh, you need the files. So how do you get the game data files for Doom 3? Well, there are two ways you can do this. If you have Windows installed alongside your Linux operating system, you can log into Windows, install Doom 3 via Steam, and then once that's done downloading and installing, you can boot back into Linux, you can mount mount the Windows partition, uh, change into the installation directory that Steam uses, Steam apps or whatever it's called, uh, find the game files there for Doom 3, and then copy them over to the directory they need to be in. But uh, I'm going to go for a sort of Wind, uh, Linux only approach, and we're not going to boot into Windows. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to install Steam via Wine, and we're going to run it that way. Um, so yeah, first thing you're going to want to do is run sudo apt, if you're using a Debian derivative distribution, sudo apt-get install, and you're going to want to want to install Play on Linux. And what Play on Linux is, it's a very streamlined version uh, front end to Wine that just makes install installing Windows applications a ton easier. So yeah, once you uh, install Play on Linux via that command I just told you, you're going to want to run Play on Linux by typing in Play on Linux into your command line. And then this little window is going to pop up. When you first pop it up, it gives you a bunch of crap you have to click through and it just tells you a couple things. Anyway, yeah, now that uh, we got Play on Linux running here, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on install program and under search we're going to type in steam so we can find it and we're going to click on steam here and we're going to go ahead and click on install down here and uh, yeah it tells you a bit of uh, things about play on Linux how you should go about installing stuff you can just click through next through this stuff unless you want to read it first um, so yeah <coughs> so it asks us to select a virtual drive name. We're just going to type in Steam. Um, then we're going to hit Next and then it go ahead and creates the virtual drive. But you don't really need to know all this. But yeah, when you first run this application it's going to go ahead and install Wine for you. It's going to go ahead and install Wine Gecko. It's going to do all the um, stuff for you and as you can see right here it says oh you don't have the Microsoft fonts so I'll go ahead and install them for you you click on agree next see this just this application play on Linux just makes installing uh, Windows applications on your PC that much easier 
So yeah, right now it's downloading the Microsoft font package. And when it gets done with this, it's going to, of course, run the installation and install them inside your Wine partition. So that way, uh, whenever you want launch a Windows application with Wine, it can see it all. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, pause the video because uh, it's pretty self-explanatory what you do. It says, hey, you need to download this file. So you click OK, Next, and then you just install it all. It's as simple as that. Uh, I'll see you guys in a second. And welcome back. I just got done uh, running the installer. Now, one thing you do want to, I should have noted is after you install Steam, like it asks what language you want to install it in and all that, uh, you don't want to, you want to uncheck the box that says run Steam because you want to run Steam from Play on Linux. You don't want Steam to launch itself. Uh, so, yeah, and uh, once you're done with that installation, Play on Linux will also ask you how much megabytes your graphics card has that's that you should know that um, if not then just look up your graphics card and I'm sure you can find it anyway yeah so once we're done here it says here that Steam is right here in the play on Linux menu and we click on run and this will go ahead and install or excuse me go ahead and run Steam and of course the first time you run Steam it's got to download updates Yeah, uh, I guess it's ready for another pause. Woohoo! And welcome back. Yeah, so uh, Steam just got done downloading an update. And then what we're going to do is we're going to log into our Steam account and you're going to go ahead and give your information. So, yeah, after you log into Steam, you're then, uh, you know, dumped into the Steam client. Um, and yeah, once you're in here, you're going to want to go ahead and find Doom 3 in your Steam library. You're going to want to click install and go ahead and install Doom 3. And then, uh, yeah, once that gets done downloading and installing, uh, you're going to want to go into where the files are downloaded and then you're going to want to move them into their appropriate directory. Um, <laughs> Time for another pause, because my internet's slow, and this uh, will take quite a while to download. Alright, so Steam just got done downloading Doom 3. Now, what we're going to do, now that Doom 3 is done downloading, is we're going to change into the directory that uh, Steam downloaded Doom 3 into, and we're going to extract the necessary files and put them where they need to go. Now. We're going to go uh, back in our web browser, we're going to go back to the Doom 3 Engines uh, page on GitHub. We're going to go to this little uh, thing over here that on the right side that says wiki. If you're still on the release things, it's right here, you know, it's just this little book. You click on that, and then you click on FAQ. The first thing it tells you is the files you're going to need. Now these are the files we're going to get. So, how do we get there? Well, I'll show you. Now, this is a really long directory uh, listing that we're going to descend into, so bear in mind. There, get ready. So, CD, we're going to open our terminal first off, and we're going to make sure we are in our home directory. So, we're going to do this with CD uh, money symbol H O M home, you know, uh, all uppercase, and then we're going to execute that. That's going to put us at our home directory for our user. Then we're going to run a CD uh, quotation mark, and we're going to type play on. Well, actually, a good thing to do is to hit ls or type ls, uh, so that way you can get the directory name and then just copy paste it. Like if you're using uh, like uh, Ubuntu's terminal, I'm pretty sure you can just right click on it and copy and then paste it here. So yeah, we're going to run cd, uh, quotation mark, bam, and then we're going to put slash, uh, then we're going to type steam, then we're going to type drive c, drive underscore c, then program files, there is a space between program and files, and p and f are uppercase, slash, steam, the S is uppercase this time, slash uh, steam 
apps, all lowercase, common, doom3, there is a space after doom, uh, and then the D is uppercase, slash, base, we're going to go ahead and put the quotation mark, I'm going to execute that, that's going to change us to that directory, this long ass directory we're now in. So we're going to run ls, and as you can see, here's all the pack files that we need, all, all right here. So what we're going to do is, we're going to type cp, and then we're going to take type pak star. Now what this will, that star means is it's a wild card. So basically any file that has pak in it, copy it. So it doesn't matter if what follows after, just copy all the pak files. Um, then we're going to go ahead and run, or no, excuse me. So now that we uh, have the start of our command, we're going to then tell the files where to go. So we're going to say, copy them to star, or money symbol home slash dot local slash share slash dhewm3 slash base. I'm going to run that command. And uh, depending on how fast your hard drive is, this could take, uh, you know, a minute or so. Um, these are fairly large files, so they will take a little bit to copy over. And yeah, and once that command is done, you now should be able to launch the Hoom 3. But in case you go to launch it, and it tells you uh, default config not found, this can sometimes happen. Uh, if you do get that... Uh, bug, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to type touch uh, money symbol home slash dot local, the directory we did last time, local share to whom three, um, and then we're going to type base, then I want to type in uh, default dot cfg, and yeah, we're going to execute that command, and that'll just create a blank config file, because for some reason sometimes doom three uh, won't launch unless there's a config file even if it's empty you know it needs to be there so yeah once uh, you get the files copied you can launch DHEWM3 from a command line and there you go the game should now run now by default it likes to be at a really low resolution so you can go ahead and go into options here and uh, yeah change all your uh, video options Anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. I uh, hope this helps you. If you have any trouble uh, getting the game to run, maybe you're getting some sort of error message, just go ahead and leave a comment. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.